Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for August 4th, 2022, around 10.40 a.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including new tropical cyclones forming in the East Pacific Basin and a new forecast for the 2022 Atlantic hurricane season. How busy will it get? Let's go and find out. But before that, please go vote on my poll in the community tab on YouTube. This will help me understand what you guys, the community, want more of and how to best improve the content going forward and how to improve everything else. So if you guys want to go see that, links will be down in the description or you can go to the community tab on YouTube and go vote on this poll. That will greatly help me and it will also help you as well. Now, looking at the Atlantic Basin, we don't really have much going on today. That is certainly some good news. We do have a few tropical waves that are now coming off the coast of Africa still uh, embedded overall within this monsoon trough. And we do have this tropical wave here in the low latitudes that will be approaching uh, Trinidad and Tobago over the next day or so. Uh, but none of these are really expected to develop into much as we progress forward in time. That is certainly some good news. Uh, but overall, the Atlantic is pretty quiet. Now, across portions of the Northeast U.S. today, we do have a significant heat event ongoing right now. Uh, temperatures today, especially across portions of D.C. and Philadelphia, even through New York, are expected to reach near 100 degrees today. You can see the 100 degree uh, outline here from about New York City all the way down to about Norfolk, Virginia. So heat indexes could be just topping out near about one, 105 to 110 and even the threat here for some 90 degree temperatures all the way from about State College, PA, all the way through Albany, New York, and all the way up. But all that heat is going to lead to severe weather today. There is a marginal risk for severe storms today from about uh, Cincinnati and Lexington, all the way through about uh, Syracuse, New York, and Albany, New York. And uh, that is going to contribute to some damaging wind potential. Instability values are pretty significant, especially in that corridor between Cincinnati and State College, uh, including Pittsburgh. There is uh, the risk there for about 2,000 mid-level Cape, uh, based on some of the forecast models, and some pretty substantial Cape all the way down here. But no severe weather threat, really you no know, organized severe weather threat down there. Again, the main threats today is just going to be some damaging straight line winds, about 60 to 65 miles per hour potentially with that as well. Now, looking at the latest CSU forecast that came out today, we do have the updated forecast. So they are now calling for 18 named storms, eight hurricanes, and four major hurricanes with an accumulated cyclone energy index, ACE index of 150. So that is still above average, and that certainly lines up with our forecast again. Uh, back here just a few days ago on August 1st, we released our forecast calling for the same 18 named storms, six hurricanes, and three major hurricanes. So this lines up pretty nicely with Colorado State University's forecast. And again, uh, you can go back and, and see what video I did on this a couple of days ago. Uh, but this was pretty much my forecast. So this lines up pretty nicely with the Colorado State University forecast. And again, 18 named storms, that's still a long way to go. So that means that we've got uh, about 15 more, 15, 16 more storms really, uh, including the couple that have already formed, but we have a long way to go. Certainly, we still have eight hurricanes to, to pass through and including four major hurricanes. So that's going to be a pretty substantial, uh, you know, thing that we still have to kind of go through for the next couple of weeks here. So when is things going to start to heat up? Well, let's go look at the GFS forecast. This is the 6 run valid for 2 a.m. this morning. We'll go ahead and run this forward in time. Now we notice here on the GFS forecast, there's actually no organized areas of convection and vorticity that begins to form here all the way through about August 20th. And that is certainly some good news. However, let's go look at the ensembles because there is something a little bit more telling in the ensembles. If you actually kind of run this forward, you notice that a lot of the ensemble uh, members here are actually picking up on some areas of low pressure. This is the 60 run here. There's actually several areas of low pressure nearing the Lesser Antilles Islands by about August 13th. This is about 222 hours from now, so still pretty long range. And the GFS is certainly still suggesting that a train of tropical cyclones will continue in the East Pacific Basin. Now, I'm not really sure that's going to happen, but overall, it looks like that the Atlantic Basin will start to peak up and there certainly is some uh, model support for that out here and potentially back here in the deep tropics. Then if we actually look at the precipitation field, this is the P-Watt anomalies. The big problem that we're going to have is all of this dry air that's actually in the environment uh, throughout August 14th. But we need to look at the European that's actually running out a bit faster here. 
So look at the European and the precipitation anomalies as well. We notice that actually we do see this dry air that passed through about August 15th. And then after that, it looks like some of this dry air gets pretty much shunted by this big blob of moisture that's about to be moving out into the main development region at this time. And that could suppress some of the dry air entrainments that kind of come down and dip into the main development region. We need this wave breaking activity to kind of stop before we get any substantial storms in the MDR at this time. But overall, the upper level wind environment would actually be very favorable uh, for the next couple of weeks. This goes out to about August uh, 19th here. So just about that near magical August 20th date. And we notice that there is some pretty significant uh, easterly winds here suggesting that we will have anomalous easterly winds in the upper levels that uh, definitely would go to support enhanced outflow uh, potential in the upper levels and uh, lower than normal shear. Uh, we still do have some shear in the Caribbean, this upper level low here, and just in partly there is also this upper level high uh, that's sitting right here. That's kind of impinging a little bit of um, shear down there into the Gulf and Central Caribbean. So we'll just have to see how this all plays out. But overall, it certainly seems to be that we will have the increased potential for some storms to form. And we actually look at the European Ensemble mean sea level pressures at this time. We actually notice that there is a fair clustering here also around the same time frame as the GFS. This actually supports a couple of more uh, organized members that suggest maybe a weak storm somewhere near the islands by about August 13th or so. That is certainly not necessarily going to say that will happen, but certainly somewhat of a potential with the reduced shear and enhanced moisture at this time. It certainly would not surprise me if we do go to see another storm actually form. All right. So that being said, I hope you do have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali, and I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.